Have you tried to make a luminate miter, but maybe yours didn't come out perfect? Maybe it looks something like this, where it's too long on two ends and totally fine over here. What happened? Well, it's your ratio. So whether you want to make a solid or a striped, we actually have a calculator for you today, and we're going to walk through how to make this. It determines what your ratio needs to be for your loom and your yarn that you use, and it shows you which of three patterns that you need to work with. So we'll show you how to use the calculator. I'll go over the the patterns just for a moment and another video will show you exactly what to do on making yours. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. The traditional needle knit miter square involves casting on two sides of your square and gradually working decreases to the center to shorten each side to create a perfect square. On the loom, the size of the knit and purl stitches isn't always the same, so it can be tricky to get a perfect square until now. Using our loom knit mitered square calculator and the pattern that uh, is down in the links below, you can be confident your square will turn out perfectly. This pattern includes multiple set of instructions to help make that perfect square depending upon your loom choice and gauge. So here is our pattern here. And uh, we've got that down in the links below, but our calculator, uh, when you click on here, it will go to a website. Let's go to that right now. Okay, so here is our website. You're going to use some measurements by making a swatch. Yes, you're going to have to make a swatch. Yes, I had to do it too. <laughs> now, you may have an item that you have already made a swatch for. You already know what yarn it is and what loom you used. You Maybe you took really good notes. Not everybody does that. So I recommend going ahead and making a swatch. Uh, you are going to need to measure the entire uh, size of it and count all the stitches in it and how many rows are in it. So um, if it's a nice square piece, even if it's a big giant rectangle, you can just go ahead and take measurements from something existing uh, or you can go ahead and knit up another one. So I've knit this little piece here and then I'm also going to plug in notes from this one as well as two other ones depending upon your yarn and gauge because it will make a difference in uh, having to do a different pattern. So we'll get into that in just a moment. So for now, um, just kind of follow along with me and then test this out on your own by making a swatch. This one right here I used a Red Heart Chic Sheep yarn and I cast it on 24 stitches onto my all-in-one loom. It's a 3 8 small gauge loom. Okay and then I knit until uh, it was uh, a little uh, over a little about four and a half inches and I worked it until it was 60 rows. Okay so let's go down here and uh, we're just gonna look at our calculator. It says using some measurements for your swatch, this calculator will recommend the number of stitches to cast on, uh, how, many, how often to work your decreases in order to ensure your finished project is actually square. The swatch information uses your gauge swatch, this one right here, to uh, calculate in this information. So below you can enter inch measurements to the nearest eighth or centimeters to the nearest millimeter and note the uh, width and length measurements of the swatch are the entire swatch, okay? Uh, not including cast on and bind off. So here uh, I used a um, double E wrap method. So I measured right above where that E wrap method is all the way to here for my uh, rows. And I measured the width to uh, the biggest width that I got here, okay? And then I knew how many I cast it on and then I counted how many rows I did. So those are the main numbers that you need. So you can use this chart right here for uh, calculating and converting your uh, inches into decimals. Okay, that's if you're working with inches. Again, if you're millimeters, just go to the nearest millimeter. And you type in either one of the width into uh, this little cell right here. So let's say I'm going to type in the one for my swatch. I got four and seven eighths. Okay, so I say 4.875. 4.875, all right? And then my length, okay, I got four and a half. So I say 4.5. Then I'm going to enter the number of stitches across the whole swatch, type in 24. And then the number of rows that I did, I got 60, okay? And then we're gonna scroll and it automatically puts in this number here, the stitches per inch 
and the rose per inch. That's just for your information. You can screenshot this if you need to for your records or just write it down in your notes. And it tells you that your ratio is two to uh, seven, okay, 2.7. Okay, and then down here it says mitered square information. This is where you're going to put in what you want for your width in order to get the cast on numbers. So you can't get the cast on until you put that in. So let's say I wanted to make an eight inch swatch like the one uh, behind me here. So I'm just going to put in eight or you put in your millimeters and then scroll and we crunch all the data and it says cast on 77 stitches. And the mitered square pattern, you're going to use the mitered square pattern number two. Okay, so we'll get to what numbers those are in a moment. So let's say I wanted to change it. Maybe I want to make my squares four inches. All I have to do is come back to this eight and delete that and put in four and it automatically changes it to 39 stitches to cast on. Now it's still the same pattern because of the gauge of the loom you're using and the gauge of the yarn you're using with your own tension for when you're making your stitches. All right, let's do another one. Now you don't have to clear out all of these cells. You can just change them as you need to. So I'm gonna go up here to uh, width of whole swatch and I'm gonna put in, um, Let's, let's delete this one, and we're going to put in one that was made with a kiss loom. It's a, a small gauge, 3 8 loom with Vanish Choice yarn. And this was 5.5 or 5.5 stitches or 5.5 inches wide. And then the length of the whole swatch was uh, 4 inches. So uh, I need to delete that and put in just 4. Okay, so there's 4. And then number of stitches across, they did 22. So just put in 22. Number of rows, it is 21 rows. All right. And then it tells me my stitches per inch and rows per inch. And my ratio is 1 to 3. Okay. And then come down to mitered square information. And let's say I want to do an 8 inch. I'm just going to put in 8. And then it says that I need to cast on 63 stitches. It's always going to be an odd number. And that'll um, be, you'll, you'll see that when you get into the patterns. But notice this now says we need to use the mitered square pattern number one. Okay. So you'll want to make note of those changes. Let's do one that comes out to uh, mitered square number three. There's only three of them. This one was using a Cindy Wood half inch gauge loom with the same Vanish Choice yarn. Okay, so you'll get to see a different gauge here. And the width of this swatch was six inches. And the length was uh, four and a half. So I've already got the four in there. Let's just add the 0.5. And the number of stitches, uh, she also, she or he, I don't remember who it was, uh, did 22 uh, stitches wide and then made 49 rows. Okay, so we're plugging in all those things. Here's our stitches per inch, our rows per inch, and our ratio is 3.0. Okay, then we scroll down to mitered square information. If I left this number 8 in here, it tells me that I need to cast on 57 stitches. Let's see if I did it at four inches. Now it made it 29 cast on. Either way, uh, this is all going to be using a mitered square pattern number three. So uh, whatever ratio you put in, uh, all of your numbers, it will crunch to one of those three options. If it's option number one, it's going to be a one-to-one uh, traditional miter, just like the needle pattern. So uh, let's jump over. I just want to briefly go over these three patterns and um, why there's a difference. And here on the pattern, if we jump over to the notes here are saying that uh, your loom choice, you can make a mitered square on any loom. There is a a uh, non-adjustable loom, like this is called a fixed loom, where you can't change uh, where the pegs are. And then uh, there is an adjustable loom where you can put in a one peg slider. If you use the one peg slider, whether it's on the knitting board loom or the Cindy Wood that has the little wedge or slider uh, or 
or the kiss that has the one peg any one of those or ones that allow you to do that are going to let you do this traditional type of piece with a central double decrease if you use the fixed loom we have an alternate to that pattern uh, using SSK and K2 tog uh, to help you uh, move those stitches around so we actually have them written both ways so just want to jump over and show you so this page here it shows we have the traditional mitered squares we have square one and that is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio where you're decreasing on uh, every knit row okay so that's the decreases it's going to be the same whether you're on adjustable loom uh, or you're going to be on a non-adjustable loom it's just that on the adjustable one the center double decrease is going to be it let me jump over to the alternate one okay so the alternate mitered square uh, has you doing the same uh, decreases on row two where you're actually decreasing on a knit row but it's written as uh, K2 tog that's knit two together and then knit one which is the center and then SSK uh, which is your slip slip knit okay so you make a left and right leaning decrease or right and left leaning decrease and then continue on so it's all one to one it's just written different uh, for that one so that you can move stitches over and that's the basic difference all right let's discuss uh, the number two and the number three squares okay so the difference in the two that the reason why you're not making it every other row is because your ratio is different uh, so this one actually has to um, decrease it's, it makes an odd size so you decrease on four out of the ten rows okay so you have a, a decrease on row two and four and then you work a few rows and then you decrease on uh, rows seven and nine okay and then you repeat that process after you've worked 10 rows and you just continue on until you have three stitches at the end if you go to uh, the mitered number square number three that one is odd and that one decrease every uh, every third row okay so decrease on every third row and uh, on on the number three and on the number two because uh, of those you'll have decreases that are um, purling a decrease or knitting a decrease okay uh, that but the traditional miter never decreases on a purled row so that's the basic difference in those patterns whether you're doing a uh, uh, solid or a stripe you're gonna do all of them the same way just a quick tip on the stripes if you're changing colors the only difference is you're just going to be changing colors on knit rows whether you're decreasing them or not never change a color on a pearl row all right so uh, one last thing I do want to show you how I measure the swatch in case you are not familiar with it so here is my swatch. I'm using a hard ruler. I recommend that uh, versus a fabric ruler, which can get stretched out, but you, you can go ahead and use this. But if you have a hard ruler, I suggest it. I'm just gonna measure across. Um, this is kind of just hand blocked out. It's This is in garter stitch pattern, if you're wondering, where it's all knit and pearls. Put my, um, put my stitches all the way up, or my ruler all the way up against the last stitch here, okay? Because that line, counts on that edge and go all the way across and then we're going all the way to the largest part here which is right here if you're not used to counting it these longer lines here not the smallest ones but the longer lines here are all eighths so we're gonna say one two three four five six seven this is seven eighths so that's how I got my four point seven five or four point eight seven five I should say and then when I want to measure my rows I go down here and I go right above where my cast on row is and then I measure uh, all the way up to the top and then this green yarn up here this is just a provisional bind off where you just put scrap yarn through all those top stitches you don't actually have to bind off it's faster and then I'm just gonna measure here and I get four and a half so that's where I got my 4.5 and then I know I had 22 stitches or 24 stitches wide and 60 rows long well, I hope that's helped you today and understand the basics of getting those three patterns on your knitting. And if you need further help in actually making them, we will have another video how to make the solid and how to negotiate all those different uh, stitches on working with our looms. And then the next video will be on stripes the following week. Thank you so much for joining me today. Happy looming! Thanks for joining us today, where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.